Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art. And I'm doing this brief introduction to where I'm going to be doing mica powder resin on a ceramic plate. So some of what you're going to see in the next second is going to be a little bit of a repeat from the last resining video I just did. But I have to include it just because of safety reasons in case somebody may not have seen the last video. So yeah, you're going to see me do resin mica powder ceramic plate for the first time and you'll get the benefit of my learnings and uh, we'll let you see what I do. All right, get you back down in a second. So first and foremost is safety and I have a respirator and gloves. I wear two pairs of gloves, uh, nitrile gloves on the outside. Uh, so as I go through the resin process, I may have to remove a pair of gloves and I'll still leave me with a pair of gloves on. Have my stir stick, my little, um, this is a hundred mil cup. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, isopropyl alcohol. And heat gun, which I just got the heat gun back in uh, November. And this thing has been fantastic for getting out air bubbles. And then I have my resin. This is the KS resin that I use for all my coasters and tiles and things. And what I'm going to use today. I also have some resin powder, mica powder that I'm going to try to use today. We'll see how this goes, but I've got stir sticks. I've got my color selected and I've got cups I'm going to put it in, put the regular uh, clear resin in, and then I'll mix it up with the mica powder and then I'll pour it into that plate I'm going to uh, work on. And if you can see, I've scuffed up the ceramic on it to give the resin a better time to bite into the, uh, into the ceramic. So, so my heater kicked on, so I'm going to voice over this part and double time or faster through this. And basically I'm on a walk, so I apologize if I'm a little huffy puffy. <laughs> so I'm measuring out my uh, resin at this point. And, and because this is a 12 inch by four and a half or so inches, the KS resin calculator, you can go online and find it. Uh, says I need about two ounces. So I always work in milliliters. So two ounces is approximately 60 milliliters. So I measured out 30 mil uh, resin and 30 mil hardener. And I'm going to mix it up for the four full minutes, gently stirring, making sure to get the bottom and the sides as I go. And I'm going to really go through this. I might just skim through this, but it's four minutes. Here I'm showing you you're going to get bubbles, but what you're going to see is this turn cloudy and you'll start seeing wisps of gray or cloudiness, you know, throughout it. But as you get closer to four minutes, it's going to clear up. You'll have some bubbles in there, but that's okay because the bubbles will go away when you use the heat gun on it. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to fade into near the end of this entire stirring process. So here I'm going to show you the air bubbles. So when you do it for yourself, you don't get alarmed. That's normal. You can't help but mix some bubbles in there. Keep stirring and I'm almost done. And I'm also showing you there how clear it was at this point. But go mix for the full four minutes. Or whatever instructions your particular resin that you're using requires. So seeing how this is my first time, I'm not exactly sure how to do this, but I'm pouring almost equal quantities into the three larger cups and the smaller cup I'm going to use for the white. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. No measurements. I'm just kind of guesstimating to have equal representation of the colors. Scraping the sides is fine. You want to get as much out of it as you can and get it into those cups so you can mix in the mica powder. And then once I'm done scraping the cup, I set it aside 
because I will, in a few minutes, um, spray it with alcohol to get the resin out of there before it sets. So once again, I'm not measuring, but I did do a little research and they, I've read it's about 10% mica powder to your resin. So I just put in a small scoop off the end of the popsicle stick there and it really, I uh, was surprised at how quickly this stuff mixed up. Don't want to over mix it, but you do want to mix it all the way thoroughly in. So that was the gold and now I'm going to work on the uh, sangria color and then after that I'm going to go to the magenta and then last I will be working on the white snow. And once again, just like mixing the resin originally, I'm scraping the bottom, pulling off the sides, scraping the sides, and stirring it all together without trying to whip it. I'm just trying to gently stir. Now for the white snow. And I'm only using a little bit of this because it's mostly as an accent to provide contrast to the other colors. Just a disclaimer here. Now, as you guys know, I've said this, this is my very first time doing this. So I'm not necessarily endorsing that this is the 100% proper way. I'm learning as I go. And as you watch me, you'll see me make mistakes and learn as I go. So here I'm laying down the sangria. I'm just kind of going by feel, just trying to separate out the color, keeping in mind I'll be laying down, you know, the magenta, the gold, and the white. And here we go with the magenta. I'm just trying to, trying to make a design that I think might look cool. What has surprised me right away in this is the sangria is very dark, much darker than I had expected when I was first uh, looking at the colors for the color palette. So here I'm adding the gold, just filling the gaps, trying to make sure everything is equally distributed before I get the heat gun ready to go. Now at this point I hesitated to add more sangria because it was so dark, but then don't want to waste anything me drove override and said, yeah, let's just put some more down. So now I got the heat gun out and the heat gun is so cool because it just makes the resin liquefied. It heats it up and just makes it so viscous. It just pushes around. So here I am just trying to make sure I get it up to the edge in a semi straight line. I don't want it to be all jaggedy. So I'm just kind of pushing it and giving it a little guidance as I go here much like I do in my trays when I'm pushing the pillow up against the side of the tray. So again, one thing that you learn in one area will translate into something else that you're doing that you don't even know you're going to do it yet. So it's always learning all the time. Just as a side note here, I was a multi-sport athlete and there is no doubt in my mind that when I learned how to catch a fly ball in the outfield, that helped me in blocking a shot in basketball or helping me spike and have the timing when I go to spike the volleyball. All of it translates and is interchangeable as far as skill sets.
So what you learn in one thing will translate into something else that you're doing. So here I am laying down the white, just trying to put it in places where I think it might be an accent to the other colors and help bring the colors out. But I will preface this by, once again, I'm just doing what's kind of in my gut at this point. There is no specific rhyme or reason of where I'm putting it besides just trying to have accent colors and contrast. I'm sure once I get better at this, I'll have a specific intention in mind as I go through this. So you might notice here after the heat gun's been on for a few seconds, everything heats up and it kind of just spreads so nicely. So with my extra color that I still have sitting in the resin tubs, I'm just adding a little more filling in gaps where I think there should be a little more breakup of color and so forth and so on. So I'm adding a little more gold here to counterpoint that sangria that in my estimation is just is too dark for me, too dark for my taste. And I wish I had more gold and less sangria. So heat gun, warm it up, spread it around, make it look a little more natural in there. And then, uh, yeah, this is, this is really fun. It's a lot of fun. It's not as hard as I expected it to be. It's just once again, getting over angst about doing something for the first time. Now, here we go with some alcohol. I saw this on a YouTube channel where if you spray some alcohol on with a toothbrush, it will give you cells, and it, and it did. But I wasn't really happy with it. But you have to dab the toothbrush off first because you don't want to just spray in a whole bunch of alcohol. So, but it does work. So now I'm getting a little more daring and I'm just gonna take the popsicle stick and run it through to try to create some sort of effects. Just playing mostly, just to get my hands in and get dirty. So yes, these are different products done earlier, but this is what I do. I put tents over whatever I've resined, and then I have my little frame that I put over that, and then I put my plastic over the top of it and put them to bed. So you notice a heat lamp here that I keep in the tent, and I also have a thermometer, and I maintain a temperature between 80 and 85 degrees under the tent when it's all bundled up. That helps with the curing process. So this is my final tent setup. Not pretty, but it works. And that's all that matters to me. <laughs> In about 12 hours, everything that's resined is dry to the touch and it supposedly is cured in 24, fully cured in three days and then ready for use in a month. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Certainly a different direction than my normal acrylic pouring. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the bell and you'll get all my latest art tutorials. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody. Till next time.